he discovered that the immune system had a quality control system. It was developing its own, it has its own internal quality control. What does that mean? It means that through development and maturation, immune cells that were capable of binding to what we call self-tissues would be discarded or neutralized in one way or another. But the one thing Burnett couldn't foresee back then is that his theory and his mechanism um, is just not foolproof. Unfortunately, it's not foolproof. And the reality that we know today is that we live with potentially harmful immune cells. So in a normal situation, they are regulated. So there's two kinds of immune cells. There's one called T lymphocytes. The T lymphocytes are very important to fight infected cells, to provide help to other immune cells to make antibodies. It's also important to, um, you know, just destroy potentially harmful infected cells and cancer cells. Some of those cells can potentially be harmful. And what we know now, it's very clear, that there are some other T lymphocytes that are called regulatory. So there's basically a police force of the T cells present. And this police force is basically making sure that those potentially harmful T cells stay quiet and don't do anything uh, devastating in the body. So that control is well known. But by the same token, we know we have antibody forming cells that are potentially dangerous. And but what we don't know is how they're regulated. We just don't know. We, know. we suspect they are. And why do we suspect they are? Because clinicians in the clinic will often have a patient with an infection. They'll do a blood test. And in that blood, they will detect what we call autoantibodies. And those autoantibodies are usually associated with an autoimmune disease. And they'll be nervous for a while. And they'll say, oh my god, this person's got a viral infection, but could that person be developing lupus at the same time? But it turns out that a month later, there's no more autoantibodies in the blood of this patient. The patient doesn't have the infection anymore, and the autoantibodies disappear. So these observations says two things to me. Number one, we have B cells making autoantibodies, and for whatever reason, like an infection, they can be activated and make them. Second, they are regulated because a month later, it all disappears. So the discovery we've made, basically, when a bacteria comes into your system, an infection, it goes to your spleen. And there, it's going to be in contact with a number of cells in the spleen that are important for infection. Some are cells that are going to make a lot of the factor I mentioned before, which is named BAF. And then there is a subtype of B cells in the spleen called marginal zone B cells. It's a very interesting population of B cells for two reasons. They're very good at reacting to bacteria and bacterial products very fast. And as soon as they're being hit by it, they just make antibodies very quickly. And these antibodies are very useful and very important because they're going to recognize the bacteria very fast and then neutralize it until the rest of the immune system can kick in and just get the armies to fight the infection. Now, the problem with these marginal zone B cells, they turn out to be the population of cells that has self-reactive B cells. And then this is a little bit of a balance, it's a little bit of a dilemma for the immune system. On the one hand, LPS activates this very fast, very efficiently, but on the other hand, many of them will make those autoantibodies. So how do we make sure they don't stay around for too long? How do we make sure they're not getting T cell help, becoming high affinity bad B cells, who are going to basically trigger an autoimmune disease in the body? This is where the BAF system kicks in. So upon activation with bacterial components, these marginal zone B cells will help regulate a receptor for BAF, which is named TACI or TACI. Remember, 
This bacteria will also stimulate other immune cells to make a lot of BAF. BAF will bind to Turkey. Once it's done that, this is how the B cells secrete very quickly all these antibodies. Low affinity, neutralizing, first line of defense. But what they do also is they upregulate on the surface a death receptor and a death ligand. And when the death receptor is in contact with the death ligand, it kills that cell. So as soon as that cell's done the job, put the first line of defense antibody, it dies. It disappears before it has a chance to be any trouble anywhere in the body. So in other words, our immune system over the years has learned to use our environment to develop defense mechanisms so we do not keep activated harmful cells around. So it's a very interesting twist to our understanding of how the immune system can prevent an autoimmune disease and regulate itself. So the thing that's important is what Bernard's described is acquired immune tolerance. In other words, it's, it's an education of immune cells that are using self-antigens to recognize what's good and bad. It's been named acquired immune tolerance. So it's an, it's an education to, toler to tolerate your body. What I've described is different. It's called an innate immune tolerance. It's a tolerance that is been developed by cooperation between immune cells and bacteria. What this discovery has, has brought is a new eye to, uh, you know, a new ideas on how the immune system prevents an autoimmune disease. Now, once you know that, you know that there's one mechanism on one hand, burn it. And it's this new mechanism there. And you go back to the disease that can't be treated. And you ask yourself, can't be treated maybe because we're looking at a different type of anomaly. And that anomaly is not the conventional Burnet issue. It is this innate immune tolerance that is defective. So once you've got that, we know the players. The players are this tacky receptor binding to BAF. We know that we have fast pass lichen. Then those are therapeutic targets. We can look at those. We can look at restoring those. We can look at bypassing those so we can get the same effect that is missing in people who don't have it and are getting sick as a result. I think anything that, um, you know, I mentioned a few, like lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, but I'd be looking also at uh, cancers in the immune system because uh, this particular receptor I mentioned, Taki, is expressed on cancer cells. And what if the mechanism of death, so often cancers are there because they don't die, the cells don't die, they are defect in the death pathway. And maybe that particular mechanism I've described is defective in cancer as well as it's defective in some autoimmune disease. So we should be having, you know, we should be open in terms of where this could be very important and then where we should be restoring it. So yes, th there's been a few. Um, I collaborate a lot with uh, the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute. On this paper? Yeah, this yeah. Paper? And especially uh, Andrea Strasser, Professor Andrea Strasser from the WeHi, um, came from Switzerland. And it's very interesting because um, actually when he left the Basel Institute for Immunology um, many, many years ago, I sat on his desk and I opened his thesis. And he said to me he was going to Australia and only stay a few years and come back to uh, Switzerland. But he never came back. He stayed at the WeHi and became one of these very, very talented scientists in Australia. He's, uh, he's a member of the Australian Academy and so forth. And so he's been helping us because he's, a, um, how can I say, an expert in the death pathway that we've discovered. And he's generated a lot of animal models to dissect this and confirm that is exactly what was going on. So it's been very helpful, him and Lauren O'Reilly, uh, an early career researcher in his lab. Uh, we have help also from Paul Herzog at the Monash Institute of Medical Research. So Paul is very, is, a, is an expert in um, bacterial induced inflammation, innate immunity. So, um, so it's been very uh, helpful and instrumental in helping us 
you know, understand and, and develop this project and get the results we got. And also uh, collaborators from hematology, um, Dr. Steve Jondarkis, and uh, he's been helping us understanding the signaling events that are involved in this. So yeah, it's been a, um, a, a state-wide effort, and certainly a Melbourne-wide effort, and uh, that's the fun of it, actually, is to be able to really um, pick the brain of the best. And there's a huge concentration in Melbourne, so it's been very exciting in that respect. Little bacteria is coming in very fast. They bind to TLR4 on all these cells. The orange thing is BAF being produced, binding to tachy, the cells make antibodies, and then they upregulate fast and fast ligand. And then that triggers death of the middle B cells in the middle of the marginal B cells, and they disappear. And that's how the immune system regulates itself. And make sure that that cell here in the middle, once it's activated, disappears and not staying around and causing trouble.